<laughs> so greetings and welcome again to the master in manhood podcast i'm here with the awesome brother chevy ruff um the brother's going to teach me a few things about mental well-being today i hope chevy welcome thank, thank you, you very for much taking the time brother thank you man it's thank very you good to be here we're here in old street we are it used to be my old stomping ground i had an office just behind you there um launch 22 yeah i think they've moved over somewhere else now uh, they got broken into twice actually last week which was crazy but anyway today we're talking about mental no, wait, I just, i'm saying i think my, my office is unlocked right now but we're good no you should be fine this is a much much more secure building um so before we came live now we were just talking about my issue of um my own mental issues that I was yep. facing growing up. So I, I learned I was dyslexic, actually found out from my wife. Um, I used to, my cousin actually told me before that, but then my wife kind of did a little bit of digging in to the fact that you know, <coughs> her, her now, you know, boyfriend, fiance at the time might have dyslexia. And you said, how did that make me feel? Well, um, the backstory is I used to get beaten a mm. lot for not being able to read properly mm. um, so i used to count my words so it, it would be i am one yeah. and stuff like that's how i used to read growing up and i used to get i used to get caned for that my mother used to it was no good so my grandmother would always say stop doing that da, 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 da. and you know it, it it went with me right throughout my school year years and when I got to high school, I could I was really good at reading. Mm. So I was more interested in literature and anything to do with reading than I was sciences. So yeah. I didn't like math at all. Um, I liked technical drawing because I could use my hands and all of that sort of stuff. So when I found out I was dyslexic, I was one angry, very angry that nobody knew I was dyslexic for all this time. And two, I was very relieved that, you know, I. Yeah, there's there's an actual reason I leave all my ease off yeah. of of my words. So it was kind of a bittersweet moment, um, and I've struggled with different kind of different kind of mental health issues. And again, all of this is new. I'm just just now learning all of these things. I'm going through some stuff now that I'm just figuring out. Like, oh, actually, that made sense when I was 19. This is what was going on, and you know, now I'm kind of unpacking all of that stuff now. So, which is one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you because of the, the awesome work you do and I, I kind of stalk you on social media and stuff and, and see what you do and, and put a lot of it into practice. Um, a lot of the things that you post, like the other day you posted something, you, it was six things that I needed to do. The systems, yes. The systems. And, and I did that for about three days, you know, and it worked. You know, I, I, I have my walks, I find a tree. Yeah. Wherever I am, I find a tree. Like a, like a crazy person, I'll sit by that tree, which is why I have this tree in the background. And I'll just, I'll just, enjoy, I'll just enjoy the fact that it's a living organism. You're not and a crazy person though, right? Like this is, I, think, <laughs> I think this is the thing that we, we've got to understand is that, uh, and, and the way that we communicate as an organization is we try and look at these complex narratives, these complex conversations around health, well-being, mental health, um, we actually just try and look at them from a very black and white perspective, mm. you know, and we actually try and ignore the grey. It's mm. not that the grey isn't relevant right. and with conversation and getting to know us, we'll talk about that. Right. But we're just trying to get people to a starting point. Right. Like what can they control right. today mm -hmm. to improve their physical and mental health? Mm. Right, so to do that, we've got to start in the black and white. We've got to start with the do's and don'ts, mm. you know. And for for us, it's kind of like, hey, well, let's look at physiology, right. right? Let's look at because physical health is mental health, right? Right. We know that when some people have panic attacks, their respiratory rate changes first yes. before they feel an emotion, right? Okay, okay, so and let's understand that. Like our yeah. respiratory system is dialed up into the part of our brain responsible for emotions, right? So if that's the case, what if next time I'm having a panic attack, that feeling, right. what if I changed my breathing, I changed my response? Right, right, how would right, that right. change my feeling? feeling. Right, right. And then how would that change how I respond mm. to that stressor? Mm. Do you know it, right? Mm. And we know this, right? When we're fight, flight or freeze, when we're up and we're spiked, mm. 
we're looking for the fastest solution. Right. Because you know what? If someone came in here with a knife right now, yeah. or if a lion ran in here, yeah. I'd want the quickest solution. Yeah, 100%. But you know what? When it comes to you going home and communicating with your wife or going to talk to your family or mm. dealing with a business problem, mm or you trying to navigate something that's spiked you, mm. is the fastest solution the best solution? Mm. Or do you want to be able to see the bigger picture and find the most creative solution? In my home, fastest is definitely not the <laughs> Well, this is <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. And you understand, like, yes, you know, when yes. you talk about the backgrounds and, mm. and where we all come from, and, and you know, we're, you know, and I, I look at where I'm from, and it, it's, it's, you know, grew up, and, and uh, it's always the hustle, right? You're always looking over your shoulder, and in life we are, and, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a very fight or flight environment. 100%. You know, and you're just constantly looking for the quickest solution out of <laughs> a million and one problems. Yep, yep, and I yep, think yep. that's what we're seeing in a lot of young people these days. And, and, and then, like I say, but when it comes to navigating and trying to find cognitive skill menus to be able to make better decisions in life, Mm. We need to create the right internal physiological environment to do that. Right. So what you're saying is, in essence, if I am in a conflict situation, so these are the type of young men I deal with. Mm. So they, on a daily basis, have to make a decision on whether or not to fight or to figure out something else. Yeah. And 99.9% .9 of the time, if they don't choose to fight, there's a couple of things that's going to happen. Mm. Either they get hurt yeah. or they're going to be called certain things or mm. be excluded or whatever. So I have a process or a theory on this. And I think generally, if in general, as human beings, if we take 10 seconds, if we take just that extra second yeah. to make a more informed choice, right? So like you said, when we get in a situation or, or physiology changes, so we actually, our bodies start figuring out, okay, this is the situation and this is what, so it, your blood starts pumping, yeah. your heart rate goes up and all of these things. And you know, a lot of us switch off what happens up here and we just react to situations yeah. and I'm quite guilty of that yeah. as well. So what you're saying is we need to hone that skill up here yeah. and figure out, okay, in this situation, what's the best thing to do? It's awareness, right? Mm. Like we all want to change, how, we all want to change moment, yeah. how we feel. Well, no, it's not about being present in the moment. It's mm. bringing an awareness to where I am right now. Right. And how am I where, where I am right now? How is that going to make me respond right. to the stimulus in front of me? Right. To the situation in front of me? Right. You know, and that's what we look at. We kind of get people to read the physiological signs, right? Mm. When people have panic attacks, I take people into my into environments and I cause them panic. Mm. Right? Mm. I mess with their breath. Right, right, <laughs> I mess right. with their systems. Right. I put them into a place where they start to <sighs> feel out of control. Mm. And then I teach them how to identify that and shift back down. Mm. So next time they're in life and they feel <gasps> right. they've put in repetitions and work, they've been there. Right, Does right, that make right, sense? Right, like they've rehearsed that moment. Right, right, and it's right. like, actually, hold on a sec. I feel that feeling. I feel me spiking. I feel that fight, flight, mm. freeze response. I'm there. Mm. No, hold on. <sighs> Let me just. <sighs> Mm. Right. right now how is that going to help me make better decisions because mm. again we know that when we're when we're in that fight flight or freeze we're in this tunnel vision right you know we're focused on our prey we're yeah. focused Focus on the stress on the stimulus, yeah. and a stress isn't a bad thing a stress mm. is just a call to action for our body for our bodies right, right. our body's like hey there's a stress right cool i'm going to give you tools now to get through that to stress that yeah. now, that was great if there's yeah. a lion ran in the room yeah Yep. Right, but it's not so good, it, you know. And yeah, if you're backed up against the wall in school, then mm. you know you're going to need those resources. But yep. we also know that you kind of need to make better decisions as well, mm. right? It's like we're working with fighters. We want fighters in the ring to to have access to those physiological kind of tools, right? Yep. Yep. We don't want them to be in a complete state of zen. Yeah. But th this is where we talk about flow, like optimal performance, mm. and that to me is not where you're losing control, but actually where you're calm and focused under fire. Yeah. And that's what we do is we build operators, right? right? From prisons to boardrooms, mm. right? People who can operate under fire. Mm. And that is about staying calm and focused yeah. when everything around you yeah. is kicking it's off. Kicking off yeah. About helping you make better decisions. And that, like I said, it's about physiology, you know? And it's, it's not just about breath, it's, it's on a macro scale and on, on kind of, you know, for you, you follow the systems, right? And I was like, it's like going to sit by a tree, like our body responds to nature. 
Yeah, 100%. There's a lot of research behind that. 100%. So just understanding that some time out, going for a walk, no mobile phones is going to help you make better decisions. Yeah, yeah. It's disconnecting from everything else that's stimulating you and reconnecting with yourself. Exactly. Being aware of yourself. I mean, I, I do that within my own organization. We take young men away into the wilderness and it's all about, you know, being disconnected from, you know, the stuff that's always mm -hmm. around you. And then we find 99.9% .9 of the time they come back better people more aware, more conscious, more thoughtful. So why did you stab that guy then? Yeah. I don't know. And they, they you, you spend three days with them and yeah. you, you'll see them actually, their, their brains just churning like, hmm, why am I making these choices? And it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. But what, you, what would you say some of the practical things are? Like on a day-to-day -day basis, somebody like me, somebody like a lot of my friends, Practically on a day-to-day -day basis because this is something I've implemented within my own home. Yeah um, So Whether it's morning or evening me and my wife we sit down together and we just Be All Right and it's ten minutes and we're just breathing. I still don't think I breathe I, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not yeah, I'm not that skilled on the breathing. I try to I do four in hold it four out um but I don't think I'm getting full breath, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. I think there's some, might be something physical. Dude, we'll, we'll come back to that one. We'll work on that one. We'll go, okay. get you in a space with me. We'll get, okay. we'll, we'll get you okay. doing that. Okay. But, and it's, it's a very, it's actually it's a very good question. It's, it's well, what is, you know, everyone's just like breathing and it's like actually, you know, mechanically, we've all got a lot of wins to be made mm. when it comes to our breath. We've mm. all become these really shallow breathers from the lives that we live. We're not getting oxygen into the bottom of the lungs. We're not that efficient at delivering oxygen to where it mm. needs to go. You know, and then um, we're also the shallow breathing and, and the way that we breathe is triggering more of a stress, stress. opposed to rest response. 100%. You know, that quick respiratory rate, that shallow breathing, yeah. you know, that's again, it's, um, so there is a, you know, when it comes to the mechanics of your breathing, mm. definitely some, but it's very quick wins that you can make. Mm. But, so going back to your, your, you know, what are the practical things that people can do? For me, I look at, the big thing for me is transitioning, mm -hmm. right? How are we going from task to task throughout the day, yep. from situation to situation? Because we all haven't got the time for the gym or to go to here or do this, right? Time is a very valuable mm. commodity. And for me, it's about, hey, like sitting and doing some breath work, trying to find some time, it's a very hard thing to do. Mm. But how can I shift my physiological, my emotional state in real time? Mm. And the commute is a great way to do that, right? Transitioning right. between environments. Right. So for me, like firstly, it comes in the morning. A big golden rule is uh, no, uh, no screen light before sunlight. Right. Um, so we work, uh, or I know some guys very closely at the neuroscience lab at Stanford University. There's a lot of great research done around kind of circadian rhythm and lights and so forth. So in the morning, just waking up naturally, not yeah. checking your screens. Yeah right because that's just going to start to trigger a stress response in you okay, okay, you've got the rest okay. of the day to have that right like okay, it's about yeah, easing yeah, yourself yeah, in yeah. i hope um, y'all are listening yeah so most it, of us wake up with our phones well right? this is the thing and you've got to remember <laughs> even from a physiological point of view like forget all the social media narratives forget yeah. all the kind of trying to keep up with productivity in life yeah. and messaging yeah, yeah, yeah. simply the like focusing our vision on something is more of a stress response than a rest response. Right. This is an evolutionary thing, think about it, right? If a lion runs in here right now, tunnel vision. Mm. But when we're in our peripheral vision, mm. we're actually sending signals to be more rest. Rest, 100%. So literally the way that we look yeah. can change our internal chemistry between right. stress and rest. Right. Pretty cool. That's pretty deep. So, if, so for that, it's like if we're just suddenly focusing on the phone, yeah. we're sending signals, we're sending that that, 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 that blue light into us as well. So getting some, even if it's cloudy, getting 10 minutes of light in the morning when you're walking to the station, it just starts to set your system up, system up well mm. for the rest of the day. Right. Um, and then it's a case of at lunch times, like make sure you're going to get a 45, 50 minute walk. Right. You know, we know that I think like 145 to 150 minutes of walking, walking. in a week yep. has similar mental health um, benefits, benefits yep. than antidepressants. Yep. It's you know, one in one in four people don't respond well to antidepressants. There are a lot of different forms of antidepressants. Right. We are designed to move. Locked away in our genetics mm. is our relationship with movement as a tool. Right. 
sitting here, we start to get tired. We want to yeah. move. Like our body is saying movement yeah. is needed. Yeah. 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 So going for a walk, but not going for a walk with your phone. Yeah. Also trying not to go for a walk with your with headphones. headphones. Yes. You know, let the thoughts come without judgment. Mm. Process the inbox. This is why so many people have issues when it comes to like meditation or just mm. doing some breath work because as soon as they close their eyes, Brain it opens up the inbox that yeah. they've been ignoring. Yeah. 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 So yeah. by yeah. saying, hey, go for a walk and process, mm -hmm. you know, and think about things. I have a real issue with that, but carry on. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's, it's yeah. I, absolutely, and it's, it's layers this we talk about, and it's, um, so definitely like transitioning, but then also, you know, every 35, 40 minutes, if you're feeling fidgety, get up, go stand outside. Mm -hmm. Don't get up and go and look at your phone because your brain is just making complex calculations mm -hmm. again. I think of most of my solutions to business problems when I go for a walk. Right. Right? Okay. Like it's just, it, as your body shifts away from stress to rest, you get access to cognitive skill menus. Mm. Look at your kids when they went, when they go into the country, yep. that's not some wishy-washy psychological yep. feeling. Yep. That is them coming out of their stressful environments. It is their internal biology and physiology moving away from fight, flight, or freeze, yeah. moving into a place of stress of rest, yep. stress and sorry, rest, rest and recovery, yep. Yep. and moving into a place where they start to get access to new cognitive skill menus mm. to deal with problems in life. Mm. And anyone watching is is like, mm, I kind of get that. Well, how how have you felt walking down the beach? Good. Have you found solutions for life problems? Yeah, 100%. that is your physiology responding to environment. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing because there's a place in Jamaica, it's in Portland and it's on the side of a mountain. Yeah. And you have writers from all over the world and they come there to do writing camps. And when you look at this place, it's all trees. Yes. You can't see the actual building yeah. when you go there. You, even when you're in there in a room like this writing, yeah, it's yeah. all the trees and plants and the birds and the lizards mm -hmm. are coming in and out to the building. And you have people who lock themselves in that building for months. Yeah. I, I can't remember how many films were written in there. Jay-Z took his whole rock nation there for a whole month and they just wrote song after song after song. So yeah, 100%. And, that's it. and, it's, and this is what I think we think that, you know, because they understand the power of environment yeah. for creativity. Right. And here's the thing, if I ask people to say, you know, who's a creative in a room, one or two people put their hand up. I'm like, we are all creatives. Mm. We are all trying to find creative solutions mm. to life problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We are trying to creatively navigate our own life. Creative, creativity is a cognitive skill menu mm. we all want access to. 100%. But it only, you only get access to it when your physiological state is, is really rest yep. than stress. And now don't get me wrong, it's not that we can't make good decisions in the state of stress, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, it, of course yeah, we can, yeah. but we just don't necessarily have, it's, it's not about, it's about having and making the best decisions. And there's a time and place to switch between the two. And it's about your health as well, yeah. isn't it? because uh, surely you can make as many good decisions as you want yeah. and you can be as good a business person as you want in a stressful environment but if you're not actually enjoying that then you're actually doing yeah. yourself a disservice yeah. so really what the point I'm trying to eke out here to whoever is watching mm. is that you know your mental health and your ment and your well-being yeah. is the most important thing Dude. and if you do the practical things that you just suggested if we all kind of practice these things because I wake up every morning and I, I don't first look at my phone, but then I straight away look at my phone. I'm reading, reading my Bible, yeah. I'm reading, um, but I'm looking at my phone. I haven't opened my curtains yet, and I don't like, I if I'm in if I'm at home by myself, all the curtains are closed, because I quite like darkness. Yeah. Um, and I can't, I can't, I, I say it all the time, I can't actually switch my brain off, because there's always things going on in my head. So what you said kind of resonated with me really, really deep because nowadays I, like on a Saturday morning, especially now I go for like an hour and a half walk. So I'm gone and I'm walking, but I take my headphones with me. But even when I'm there, I get to a certain place. It's in, it's in Sydney, yeah. it's behind the Sainsbury's. Yeah, yeah. So behind there, there's a little stream, a little yeah. river. And I go and when I get to the river, I take my headphones off and I sit there for half an hour and I just, process stuff stuff just comes in and out yeah. so what you're saying definitely resonates with me and it it has helped Good. in the last week and i just think it's a matter of putting those things into permanent practice like this is what i have to do on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. and it's just good habits just developing good habits yeah yeah so, um, 
you know, and it, what you've said there is really relevant about the, the quick mind, mm. the busy mind. Yeah. You know, I think that the world of health, wellness, and fitness is very patronizing to people saying, hey, just start meditating or take a breath. I'm like, you know, if you walk into a room full of 20 people mm. from all different walks of life in the mm. current world that we're living in, trying to get people to close their eyes and just slow down is a really hard thing. It's difficult. You yeah. know, our minds are like really quick cogs and the mm. way that you catch a quick cog is not by putting a slow cog next to it. You have to match its speed, catch it, and then slow it down. Mm. And that's why walking is a great distraction, mm. right? Like it's like, that's why maybe just sitting on the train with things around you and just starting to slow your breath down, it's it's a good distraction, mm. right? And that's the thing, it's, it's, um, it's really important things. I think people are, are being set up to fail. We're presenting them with tools that actually, no one has given us a guidebook on how to pick them up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the barriers to entry to that. So no, it's, um, it's super interesting what you say. And it's also realizing that habits, um, you know, this is, uh, I'm completely making these statistics up because I always forget them. But you know, when we try and create one habit, yeah we have about a 70 odd percent chance of keeping that habit. Right. As soon as we try and make two or three habits, it drops down to like 12%, 10%. Okay. So this is the thing when people try and suddenly make change in their life, mm. they try and eat right, move, mm. sleep right, mm. and they just set themselves up to fail because right. it's about doing one thing at a time mm. and not just for a day or a week, but for a month, three months, there's six a, months. There's a Dr. Caroline Leaf um, who has a 21 day, Yeah. Um, it takes 21 days to develop and, yeah. and kind of lock in mm. a habit um, and she's done a lot of research on this she's mm. a well-renowned uh, doctor and I actually tried to do that with reading so because I don't read is not my thing so yeah. I will listen to audiobooks I'll watch documentaries I fall asleep to audiobooks my wife said I pretty much must know every single documentary yeah. going now um, because I, that's how I fall asleep and I think it's a bad thing, but I struggle with sleep simply because yeah. I keep saying I can't switch my mind off. But what I'm trying to do is, like you said, find distractions, healthy ways of processing all this stuff that's coming into my mind so I can slow my thoughts down, so I can fall asleep naturally. Because I have to actually stimulate myself to fall asleep. Mm. It's crazy. It's the opposite for me. And, you know, I will listen to stuff and then I'll fall asleep. But then <coughs> I'll wake up tired. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I haven't actually rested. I've closed my eyes and yeah. then I wake up at two o'clock and then I'm wide awake. Yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of, like you said, I, I, I'm very interested in you just providing those practical skills. So if we recap the things you said, so 45 minute walk. So, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's look at the system. So simple one is, um, so what did I give you? The lunchtime system, the lunchtime right? System. So the lunchtime yeah. system, what was the lunchtime system? So a real practical thing. So you've got middle of the day, what can you do to help you kind of transition from AM to yeah, PM, yeah, right? Yeah. To kind of reset the system. And remember, this is even if you've had a good, a, a good morning, your body still needs a chance to restock the energy levels yeah. and move forward. Yeah. So what did we said? Firstly, listen to your inside view. Right. Right. That's the most important thing. And your inside view is the, your subconscious telling you that you need to take a break, right? right? Have you sat there at your desk and gone, oh, I really need to take a break or mm. I should probably go for a walk now. Mm. I probably should turn this screen mm. off, right? Like we're constantly telling ourselves what we need. We just don't hear it. Right. So first listen for your inside view. Mm -hmm. What will get in the way of your inside view is your outside noise. Right. And the outside noise is like, oh God, what will people think of me if I take a lunch? Mm. I can't take 50 minutes, mm. like work hard, like mm. the hustle culture culture, be yeah, productive. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Listen to your inside view. Yeah. It's telling you what you need. Yeah. Then write a to-do list of things that you haven't done in the morning that you need yeah. to get done in the afternoon because our minds like control loops. It, it, you need to complete tasks, otherwise right. it just swims around in your head. So write a to-do list of what needs to get done. Mm -hmm. Then turn your mobile phone off, leave it at your desk, go for a walk, yeah. find some nature because we respond to nature. Mm -hmm. Have a think about things non-judgmentally. Right. Then maybe have something to eat. Now, nutritional stress is a very real thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we put a lot of resources into our digestion. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a really busy afternoon, think about eating maybe just a little bit lighter, not so heavy. Mm -hmm. I think people tend to know what works for them and what doesn't if we're really honest yeah. with our inside yeah. view, right? Like, yeah. so think about what works for you. Then when you get back to um, your desk, 
Um, I can't remember what the other steps are, but pretty much, I think once you're back at your desk, that's it, don't turn your phone on, because all you're gonna do is suddenly hack, jump into your phone again, and there's a psychological thing called residue, mm. where the, if we try and go from one task and then back to another, the other task is left kind of nagging us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've had a really good lunch and feeling really good, and then you pick up your phone and you kind of see a friend who's in the Bahamas and you're not there, and you start moaning in your head about why you don't have that life, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, it's like, get, set yourself up for success. Yeah. Then get back in and get focused and push on through. Simple as that. 100%. Well, my brother, I think that's a very good note for us to end on. Thank you. I need to get in that room with you so you can teach We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And then um, that's it, man. So thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch Master in Manhood podcast. This was Chevy Roth. Check him out on YouTube. It is the... Chasing Project. Chasing Project. And he will teach you how to breathe. <laughs> Give it a go. <laughs> Until then, blessed love.